As we speak, there's another caravan on the way. Currently, there are about 4,000 or so heading up through Mexico towards our southern border. 4,000 men, women, and children, as you can see from uh, this video. That's where they are, somewhere between southern Mexico and Mexico City. Allie Bradley's been traveling with them, joins us now on the road 700 miles south of Mexico City. Uh, Allie, we last checked in with you two days ago. We heard that so far no one had been stopped. Uh, has that changed? No, so Leland, we know that a couple of people have been detained, only a couple hundred, but what one of the caravan organizers tells us, he tells us that they pick people up along the way. So we're still at around 5,000, just under 5,000. I told you yesterday, we had about 1,700 kids. We are looking at around that number still. They're still calling this the March of the Children. There are 63 pregnant women here, and it is hot out here. These people have been walking in 10-mile spurts. We just left one camp that they were at. My uh, photographer right now is going to show you guys what's going on out here. And you can see just how many people are out here walking. And again, we have been walking with them now for a full week straight and in these 10 mile increments. And what has happened in the past is one of the other uh, caravan leaders, Irenejo Mujica, telling us that what the strategy has been for border patrol and for law enforcement, like the National Guard, has been to tire them out, wait so that they can grab people out when they get a little bit tired. But the thing is, he said that strategy isn't gonna work this time because they're stopping very often. Now, we also said that immigration today pretty much gave them the offer to say, hey, if everybody wants to stay here in Mexico. All right, we were worried about that. Allie, work, shot. All or what? They can do that. Let's keep walking. Hey, hey Allie, your, your shot's sort of freezing. So I, if you just stay in one place, that'd be great. Still hearing that from the group there, that they're here because of President Biden? Yeah, you're absolutely right. That is what the most of them are saying. You know, one of the caravan leaders says, hey, we're going to Mexico City. They want to stay in Mexico. And I said, well, most of the people that I talked to, that isn't the case. The majority of the migrants want to go to the U.S. And they say it's because now is the time to do it. Now is the time because Mr. Biden is, quote, a good man. And he's going to honor his promise. The promise that they're talking about is if they have that valid asylum claim, then they have an opportunity in the U.S. And it's, it's starting to rain here. And this has been happening every single day for these folks here in this caravan. Uh, it you, you speak both to two issues. One, the desperation that people clearly feel and the hardship they're willing to go through to get to America. And on the other hand, why they feel once they get here, they're going to be let in. We talked to people on the border also who, who claimed asylum and had almost like they were reading from a script. Each one of them had almost exactly the same thing to say about their asylum claim and why they were uh, here in the United States. When we were there. Allie, uh, great work as always. Thank you. Safe travels back to the United States. We'll check in soon. Thanks, Leland. The president appeared to ignore the question from Fox News' Peter Ducey. Mr. President, is it true that we're going to give $450,000 to border crossers who are separated? A wipe of a furrowed brow was all he revealed from Glasgow. But the Wall Street Journal reported last week the Biden Justice Department is in negotiations with immigrant rights groups to settle lawsuits stemming from the Trump administration's policy that separated thousands of illegal border crossers from their children. Under the proposed plan, each parent would receive $450,000 for the psychological trauma caused by family separation. News of the plan drew intense Republican condemnation. Pure insanity, tweeted House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's one-word response, no. Senate candidate J.D. Vance of Ohio called it civilizational homicide and cynically quipped, we're very sorry that we have laws and you broke them. Here's half a million bucks. Biden immigration critic Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida said the policy is singularly unique in an administration rife with bad policies. I've seen a lot in my day. I've seen a lot that's happened over the last nine or 10 months that I didn't think I'd ever see. But this takes the cake. In a Friday radio interview, the former president said his administration was not the first to separate families, but he called the separations an effective deterrent. Well, one of the things we were doing is, you know, separation, which was done before us, but separation, when people heard that, they didn't come. Because if a parent hears they're going to be separated, they didn't come. One of the reasons I was so successful at the border. Now, on top of everything, I understand they're going to give certain people $450,000. Uh, it's not even 
believable what they're doing. It's not even believable. The present administration takes pride in its total rejection of Trump's immigration policies. We could not see it as any more different from the policy of the prior administration, which the president feels, we all feel, was inhumane, immoral, ineffective, uh, not operationally, wasn't operationally working. And because of the dysfunction uh, of it, uh, we, we have led to a very broken system that we're dealing with today. In fact, decades of unwieldy immigration law and court decisions have contributed to the immigration chaos. As the Center for Immigration Studies reports, quote, the surge of FMUs, family units, began showing up at the southern border shortly after U.S. District Court Judge Dolly G. ruled in August of 2015 that the Flores Settlement Agreement, which required the government to release unaccompanied alien minors from within 20 days, also applies to accompanied alien minors. The Obama administration dealt with that court decision by simply ignoring mandatory detention of adults. Now, after Trump, the Biden administration has resumed that Obama policy, resulting in the massive resurgence of unlawful immigration and its resultant consequences of unsanitary encampments, child trafficking, and chaos at the border. Officials with the Trump administration acknowledged their decision to enforce court-ordered family separation was flawed, so they suspended the program in June of 2018. The question is, was it any more heartless than a present-day policy, which encourages the risky journey through Central America, a risk made more appealing by the potential promise of hard, cold cash, care of the increasingly stressed American taxpayer? Doug McKelvey for The Washington Examiner. Tonight, the Border Patrol is responding to allegations of so-called shadow police units. Local human rights groups are alleging that while these critical incident teams have no federal authority, they're brought in to conduct criminal investigations, often tampering with evidence to protect border agents. This is Richard Allen has more on the calls for Congress to take action, as well as the response from Customs and Border Protection. Well, that's right. Well, CBP disputes it. This letter to Congress claims these shadow police units allow border agents to get away with nearly everything, including murder. Oh, oh my God. This 2010 confrontation between Border Patrol agents and Anastasio Hernandez Rojas, who was handcuffed as he was beaten and tased, ultimately led to his death. Federal investigators later found the killing justifiable. That's where our, our, the alarm first went off in our minds. Vicki Galbecca is director of the Southern Border Communities Coalition, which, along with the nonprofit Alliance San Diego, is calling on Congress to investigate shadow police units, which they say have been operating within Border Patrol since 1987 and acted to cover up border agents' culpability in Hernandez Rojas's death, along with a growing list of other violent incidents. Everybody assumed that they were legitimate, and they didn't bother to prove their legitimacy and in the process wound up acting like cover-up teams. These so-called critical incident teams, according to the Southern Border Communities Coalition, tamper with evidence and cover up wrongdoing by Border Patrol agents, yet have no authority to undertake criminal investigations. San Diego attorney Jean Iredell represents Anastasio Hernandez Rojas's family. I would call them washing machines. Whatever you put in comes out clean. It's almost like asking a, a burglar to investigate burglaries. In response, U.S. Customs and Border Protection said, quote, the U.S. Border Patrol maintains teams with specialized evidence collection capabilities across the southwest border, calling the work of these teams vitally important, as many critical incidents involving CBP operations occur in remote locations where other agencies may be unwilling or unable to respond. I just don't buy that at all. I think that they're just trying to cover up their cover up teams, basically. Along with congressional investigations, Galbecca said she would like to see these cases with alleged cover ups by these shadow units, including that of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas, to be reopened. In any way possible, let's bring justice to these family members uh, and accountability to Border Patrol agents that, that, that commit abuse. And to take a look at the CBP statement in its entirety, just go to cbsa.com.
We'll begin tonight with your 17 crime watch and an undocumented man at the center of a 2019 Bakersfield immigration controversy now apparently wanted in connection to a murder case. Tulare County Sheriff's detectives say 24-year-old Jose Omar Bello Reyes was the third man involved in the shooting death of a 58-year-old man whose body was found at a Terrabella orchard. A man with the same name and date of birth was arrested by Immigration and Customs Enforcement in 2019, just 36 hours after he read a poem critical of ICE before the Kern County Board of Supervisors. His case gained national attention because many people thought ICE targeted Bayo because of his poem. Two NFL players contributed to pay Bayo's $50,000 bail. We attempted to reach Bayo, but he does remain at large. We also reached out to former lawyers, including the American Civil Liberties Union, but no comment was given by news time. So far, 23-year-old Jesus Manjarres and 38-year-old Dan Eli Perez have been arrested. Deputies say they found a dozen weapons and illegal drugs after serving search warrants at multiple locations. Meanwhile, Tulare County authorities are still searching for Reyes, and anyone with information on Reyes's whereabouts is asked to call the Tulare County Sheriff's Office at 55 Nine seven twenty five forty one ninety four. This is over the border coming from all sides. Now a coalition of Democrats is calling for a federal investigation into Texas Governor Greg Abbott and his handling of illegal immigration. Steve Harrigan is at the border in Del Rio, Texas for us this morning. Hi, Steve. Hi, Sandra. That's right. At least 25 Democrats ready to take aim at the Texas governor saying the state here has its own border policy, which is illegal. Uh, Governor Abbott firing back immediately in a statement saying Texans along the border deserve the rule of law. We've been watching people cross over the Rio Grande behind me through the early morning pre-dawn hours, turning themselves in to Texas National Guard members. One family we spoke to came from Venezuela, a family of six, the youngest making the trip age four. They told us they expect to be processed and with other family members here in the U.S. by the end of the day. In the meantime, the Fox drone team continues to fly along the border five hours upriver from me near La Jolla. They said they saw more than 200 people cross overnight, a few dozen still being processed. Fox News teams all along the Texas-Mexico border. But of course, not everyone who crosses turns themselves in. Police in Van Horn stopped a pickup truck for speeding. When they opened the bed of that truck, they found 18 migrants packed in the bed of that truck, head to toe, and stacked on top of each other. The two drivers were arrested. And as you mentioned, criticism of a potential plan under the Biden administration to pay $450,000 apiece to family members who were separated under President Trump gets more and more criticism, the most recent from 11 Republican senators writing the Biden administration on Monday, saying breaking the law should not be compensated. Sandra, back to you. Steve Harrigan on that for us from La Jolla. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. We begin with an update on the large group of undocumented immigrants who crossed illegally into the U.S. Thanks for joining us. I'm Adonis Salbright. And I'm Jenny Day. This happened on Friday near Avenue F and County 24th Street in San Luis. News 11's Cody Lee joining us now from there with the new details tonight. That's right. Yuma Sector Border Patrol confirming at least 54 people from Mexico ran into this neighborhood, all scattered out. And as of right now, only 25 have been apprehended. This area rather busy during the day as many homes are still being built. Home security footage caught a handful of undocumented immigrants running, evading Border Patrol. You, you see suspicious uh, individuals. We, we, make, we have the officers make contact to determine what, what is uh, needs to be done. Oftentimes, during similar situations, the San Luis Police Department will assist Border Patrol in keeping residents protected. There was no injuries, no no, no situations that required any medical attention uh, as far as uh, the, our side and police. One construction worker we spoke to says he saw a few of them running into unfinished houses. Another worker saw agents looking for any activity. I just said to my um, co-worker, hey, the, those are um, the Border Patrol, and I think they they are they will get some people or just a person. Mm. I don't know. With many still not apprehended, the police department tells News 11 they will stay on top of this. We continue to maintain a close eye on the on the location, and that we also get we communicate our, our the circumstances uh, through Facebook, and, and we allow uh, we let people know. Hey, if you see anybody suspicious, please let us know. 
Now, a local mother told us that she did run into some problems on Friday getting her children out of school. Well, SLPD alerts schools in the area when these types of situations happen, but leaves it up to the school and district to decide if it's urgent enough to lock the school down. For now, reporting in San Luis, Cody Lee, News 11. We'll send it back to you.